I'm John Chapman. I'm joined here by Taylor Hawkins and Nate Wood of Taylor Hawkins and the Co-Tail Riders. How's it going, guys? Good. How's the tour going so far? We're having a blast. How many dates have you done so far? We did maybe five on the West Coast, right? Mm -hmm. Let's see. One, two, three, four, five. Yeah, about one, five two, on the West Coast. And then so far, this is our... This is our fourth. This is our fourth on the East Coast. Yeah. Okay. And how... We're five and five, really. Yeah? And then, and then, and then how long is it going? And then we go to London, and we're doing a show in London. And then we are off for a while, and then we're going to Europe to do some festivals. Okay, cool. And then, um, and then we're off, and then we're going to go do some more festivals. And then probably go to Australia, do a show, or three. Yeah. And then Japan, possibly do a show. For you, Taylor, is this a little bit more relaxing than like a, a Foo Fighters tour? I don't know if relaxing is a good word. Relaxing is the right word. Um, yeah. It's actually more work. Yeah. I mean, there's actually less sleep involved than, you know. Really? You know, carrying drums myself sometimes. And you have to sing your. And I got to sing every night. Yeah. Every night. So that's that's kind of the most stressful part of it is yeah. that I wake up every morning going. Like with soundcheck today, I was like, oh, I'm having a long time reaching some of the notes. I better warm up pretty good before we play. But you know, you uh, spray a little afrin on your vocal cords and and uh, drink some throat coat and do some warm ups and and that mixed with the adrenaline usually, you know. I'm not, you know, I'm not George Michael or Freddie Mercury. I'm not like yeah. a great. Is that a bathroom reference? Oh no, <laughs> no, funny enough. no, no. I, I don't mean in that way. I'm yeah. not that way in the vocal right. way. So you know. I have to ask you because it's kind of unfair. about Adam Lambert. Oh, another. Yeah, another that's one. You seriously. You have to be gay to sing really good. That's yeah. that's where I that's yeah, where yeah. I've blown it. Three guys with really good falsettos. Yeah, exactly. And one who got in trouble in the last week. Exactly. At least that we know of. Yeah. Probably. All great singers. Yeah. But let me ask you this, because it's really unfair, because you're in, what, two bands now, right? Yeah. Um, a third on the way, maybe? Like, between you and Dave, and then maybe if you got together with Jack White, you would absolutely dominate the world with all these bands. Yeah, no, we're right? probably... So what's with you guys? I, I think that, that, you know... There's just more time in the day than you think, you know. Yeah. And and you know, the fire schedule's heavy when we're on, but light when we're off. You know, yeah. I mean, we've had a year and a half off, so I'm not yeah. gonna sit around and you know go buy art or right. something like that. You know, I want to play. You know, and yeah. I love playing with these guys, and it's just such a different thing. You know. Yeah. I get a totally different thing uh, when I play with these guys. You know. What about the the pressure on that you put on yourself for each show? I mean, with the Foo Fighters, you know, the biggest rock band in the world, you kind of don't really have to sell any of that. But like, you know, with your, I don't want to say that this is a side project, but it kind of is. It's a you side know? project. Yeah. So I mean, how much pressure do you put on yourself? Well, for each individual show, a lot. Yeah. You know, yeah. absolutely, we all do. You know? yeah. I mean, I'm the kind of, I guess you would say, performer or whatever that. And, and, it, and it shows up in the way that I play drums, I think, that, you know, I kind of, I don't know why, but I, I don't really, I treat every show as if it's like the last show I'll ever do, you know? Yeah. And I don't know why, I just get on stage and I have this sort of, you know. I mean, I've seen you. I freak out. Yeah, I've seen you, <laughs> I've seen you pretty close in concert, uh, yeah. and I think like, you know. Uh, I'm not like a controlled but I honestly yeah. think that, you know, the president could walk right by you or, you know, like, I don't know, someone in a pink monkey suit and you would have absolutely no idea. Yeah. You just so kind of, yeah. no idea. Yeah, I would say so. To a Might be a good idea during the tour to do that with the pink monkey yeah, suit. Pink just monkey yeah, pink yeah. monkey yeah. yeah. So let me ask you, Nate. Um, you weren't on the first record, but you toured, right, with the band? <laughs> and now uh, you're on the record. Any, any... Uh, Not enough. He's a busy guy. Yeah. Tell him you're busy. Yeah, give me Tell your spiel, because I'm just curious of, of the dynamic of performing on tour now, you know, when you're actually on he's, the record versus... He's slotting it. He's, yeah. he's actually a better drummer than I am. Um, yeah? True. Uh, <clears throat> yeah, I wish... I don't know. Uh, it was really great to play on the record. It was fun to be just involved in a few things I was involved in. Yeah. Um, and uh, uh, I don't know. I mean, like, when I'm playing live, I'm basically playing probably what I would have played on the record. So, right. I don't know. But so it's not a different dynamic too much, right? I mean, no. you're, just, you're just playing. No, he's absolutely yeah. really yeah. as part of the band as anyone else is. Yeah. And tell, Nate's an, uh, actually an amazing drummer, and a, ja a jazz drummer, but yeah. beyond other kind of styles. 
Yeah, that's what I do most of the time. Um, cool. Yeah, that's what I do most of the time. So I, you know, getting to do this is super, super fun. Yeah. He just happens to be able to pick up a guitar and play like freaking Al Di Miola or something. You know? Jeez. I hate him. The bastard. He's like, he played drums like Buddy Rich and played guitar like, you know, whatever. So. <laughs> Let me ask you this. For you, Tim, going on tour this time with, with the new record, like, um, what was what was the last? It was like six years, right? Between yeah, four or five years, I think. Yeah. yeah, so I mean, going into not just the tour, but the album, I mean, how did you want to mix it up for another Coattails record? Well, you know, I, 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 I originally thought for this, I'm going to go out front and sing more and do all that kind of thing, but I just can't tear myself from behind the drums. I just. I never wanted to be a front man. I don't do this because I have front man aspirations. I really don't. I do this because I like writing songs and I like singing. But I just, you know, I, like I told Nate originally, I want you to play more drum, like drums on a bunch of it and stuff. But I just don't feel very comfortable up front like that. I feel comfortable from behind the drums. Right. And I just, it's, you know, so... It may be limiting to some people, you know, you know, you should get out front, you know, the way you could be a, you know, a, a, a real proper band with a front man running right. around and stuff. And, you know, whatever, it is what it is. And I, I just, and I think it's just kind of the essence of this band is that I'm the singing drummer, you know, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah. I mean, you know. But I think that's good. I mean, personally, you know, I think... The way everyone is is they, they just have to compare everything to other things. Right. So obviously Dave Grohl was a drummer. Now he's the front man. So I think it's kind of good that you are the the singing drummer versus yeah. Going if I was road. going up there and playing yeah. guitar and trying to act like Dave or whatever. Right. Um, the thing is, it's funny because Dave's like just one of the best rock and roll drummers to ever walk the planet. Yet he's <laughs> become. One of the greatest frontmen. I, I think. I mean, for me personally, as far as like t turning an audience of eighty thousand people into like a small club, Dave has the power to do that. And right. I don't really know of that many others out there right now that yeah. have that same thing. That you know, I guess someone like Mick Jagger or Freddie Mercury or whoever. You know, the the, the, the great frontmen of the of rock and roll, and Dave's one of them. Yeah. So, I mean, he's obviously uberly, crazily talented, and he's just sort of, you know, you would slap me upside the head if I said that, but he's just kind of a born star, you right. know? But he's, he's a bit of a song and dance man. Really. <laughs> yeah, as they say. <laughs> but, I mean, he seems pretty grounded. I mean, absolutely. you guys seem pretty absolutely. grounded, he's, too, he's been my, the best teacher yeah. as for how to handle this business. Yeah. Absolutely. You know, he's very much a normal family guy. You know, uh, you know, stayed very close with his family, his mother and father. And his, he's a very good dad, and he treats people, everybody the same. Uh, you know, you ask any crew in the world, and they would say, uh, you know, Foo Fighters is the band you want to work for. And that's because, you know, there's no rock star bullshit involved yeah. in, this, in the Foo Fighters. And that's Gary, and I've... You know, that's been a good lesson, and a good, you know, he's been my teacher in that way as well. Yeah. It's going to get loud, isn't it, guys? Yeah. So we'll talk about it. Hey.